Casey Anthony is not going anywhere, at least not for now. Casey is still in jail. She wants out. The trial court judge said she would have to post a $500,000 bond. She can't post that, so she went to the Court of Appeals asking for help. Did she get it? Nope. The appeals court denied Casey Anthony's motion to rehear and appeal to have her bond reduced from $500,000 to something less. That means the jailed mother will continue to be held on $500,000 bond. Let's bring in the panel. As live from Westchester County DA and Judge Deneen Pirro and criminal defense attorneys Michael Cardoza, Ted Williams, and Bernie Grimm. And not one of you thought last week that this that the bond would ever be um, reduced. So you're all right. So Janine, I'll start with you. Do you want to take the first bond? Well, no. I mean, it, look, we've all agreed that this is an incredibly high bond, Greta, given the, the, the facts and the charges that she's facing. But there are no new facts that, that, that the appellate courts could say, well, there was a reason for the judge, uh, you know, to, to set it or not set it at this rate. And so at the end of the day, they're going to leave alone the trial judge's assessment of what the bond should be. And she's not getting out. And that's just the way it's going to be until they charge her with murder. All right, Bernie, um, apparently somebody has brought in psychic detectives. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ted knows that when you have homicides and especially missing children, people are so desperate, they'll watch an alignment of the stars to think they, if they can find a child. It's as reliable as the um, FBI profilers. Um, I mean, if it makes you feel good, go ahead and do it. But um, there's a better chance that Ted and I are going to walk out and see Kaylee walking down the street. Uh, you, right. you know, I have been in this business for over 20 years, law enforcement and the legal business. Come on, well, I, 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 no, yeah, come on, on Ted. Ted. You're older than that. I'm I've done 20. <laughs> but I can tell you, I don't know of a single case that a psychic has solved. This is what we call in Louisiana voodooism, and it should not be. It's becoming a part of a circus atmosphere in this case. All right, Michael, um, let me ask you about um, the canceled visits to the, by the family and by Casey. Um, surprised? Surprised? No, not really surprised, because I think you were spot on a while ago when you said that they're tired of having their telephone conversations taped. And as an attorney, I would tell the family, look, I know it would be nice to visit her. I know you just want to go in and chit chat, but believe me, you might say something very innocent that will be misinterpreted and used against her later. Just forego the visits for a while. All right, I'm going to hit all of you very quickly with a question, just a yes or no question. It's, mm -hmm. it's the subject of our poll, but uh, I'm going to start with you first, Janine, because the guys need a little more time to think. <laughs> uh, all right. If she were charged in connection with the disappearance of her child, uh, went to trial, and you were uh, you were picked as a juror. Could you honestly? Could you at this point say you could presume her innocent, Janine? Yeah, yeah, I could because I understand that even as a <laughs> when I was a judge, you even though you're hearing the facts of the case as a juror, I mean, in a bench trial, you you can eliminate stuff that's prejudicial. I mean, I'm trained to do that. I think your poll is going to come back. Most people think she's guilty, <laughs> and it would be hard for them to separate themselves. But make no mistake. Judges do this every day when they sit on a bench trial without a jury. They hear Ted? prejudicial yeah. evidence and ignore it. Well, if I was just a layman juror, a layperson juror, uh, it would be hard for me to uh, just put everything aside. I think it would, uh, I would be very prejudiced and biased. Bernie, do you think she's uh, guilty or not at this well, point? Well, instead of being a juror, I'll be a defense lawyer. My first move would be to strike Janine because she's lying right through her teeth. So. <laughs> well, that's hogwash. You know what, Bernie? That's hogwash. <laughs> Judges do it every day. They have to. Hey. Yeah, to me, right. Yeah. Michael, my, Bernie didn't answer the question. I'll get back to Michael. Michael, could you presume her innocent and be a juror in this case? I could presume her innocent uh, in this case, even though I would be fighting against my emotions. Uh, you know, what Janine just said, we as defense lawyers hear that from jurors all the time. Oh, I can be fair. I'm trained to be fair. I can put that aside. I don't believe them for a second most of the time. It's well, you really don't believe difficult the judges, the, Michael? Uh, do I? You don't Janine, believe no. the judges At when times, they say no. that? No. There are some that, no, I don't believe they could put their emotions aside. I've had conversations with some in very volatile cases that become very emotional. Most are able to do that. I will give you that. They are able to put the emotions aside. But I'm talking about I'm jurors. Talking about even most jurors. Stop. I'm not even talking about emotions. I mean, here's the, here's the problem is that what we've heard is that you've got a mother 
who on June 16th is last seen with her child. The child, then she borrows a shovel, she has gas cans, <laughs> the, the trunk smells, she goes out partying, she never reports the child missing, she ends up in jail, it's the grandmother that has to report it, and she's worried about herself in jail. I mean, those are unfortunately, regrettably, those, that is an emotion, those are facts, and that's a but, problem. But Greta, Greta, no, they're not facts when you're picking a jury. The jurors don't have that evidence. You're asking them as they are being seated. Can they be fair? Having heard nothing, and that's what Janine is addressing. And having heard nothing, they should I, be fair, but could they be? Probably. I guess, my, Go ahead. I guess my question was based on the fact that you'd heard, I mean, if we can find some people who haven't heard about it, I agree with you, haven't heard about the case. I, I really meant just sort of the, the, the powerful impact yeah. of having you some information. You know, Mars, Greta, publicly, I have to tell you, wherever I go, people are outraged about this case. And, you know, we talk about a lot Black of cases. Alert. This I mean, is terrible. It's it's hit a nerve. Nerve. Sure. Yeah, it's it's hit a nerve. And people that's are the angry. emotion of it. Yeah. Anyway, sure. it's terrible. And you watch, you know, in this case, what they should do is they should prosecute her for the child abuse, let her sit in prison, and continue to, to investigate. investigate this yeah. case. I will I bet you that what's in that. Okay. Uh, we, don't, we don't get the end of that one. Say, so, okay, we'll see you back tomorrow night. We're all on the edge of our seat for that. Could Casey Anthony get a fair trial? Her toddler, Kaylee, is still missing, and many are suspicious that Casey was involved. You went to GreataWire.com and answered this poll question. If Casey is tried in connection with the disappearance of her child, Kaylee, could you presume Casey innocent at the start of her trial? 20% of you said yes, 80% of you said no. Thanks for voting. Thank you for being with us tonight. We'll see you all again tomorrow. Bill Riley is next at the top of the hour. Good night.